This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. We're now going to begin the process of coloring. There are several ways you can approach coloring in Procreate. First, let's take a look at something that's a little bit more old school and helpful for beginners. And that is to color on a separate layer. So if we make a new layer underneath the inking layer, you can see we have two with the sketch. Just come down here and tap on the plus button to make a new layer under inking. And using any sort of inking brush that you wish or an airbrush, and you can pick the color that you want once you decide on your brush, you can come in and on that layer, just start coloring in. And you can do this however you wish. And the nice thing about it is all the details from the inking remain no matter where you color. And if you make a mistake, you can come in with your eraser and correct to help out with the design. But while this is nice for painting, it's not necessarily a good method for the style that we are going for. Since we're using Procreate, let's go back to our layers. And on that inking layer, if we tap on the thumbnail, we'll gain access to that menu. And the third option from the bottom is reference. If we tap on reference and then go back to the bottom layer that we were just working on, come over here to our color and drag and drop within the fish, you'll see that the bottom layer adheres to the inked lines and fills in. Now it's not perfect because due to the line work, we have some issues going on here. Some spots aren't filling in. Now you could go in and just continue to fill in like this. However, you'll find that there might be some issues where there's gaps. You could take your brush and come in and color in like that if you wish. However, there is another way. Let's undo that fill and once again, grab the orange color and bring it in. At the top, if you keep your pencil held down, you'll see there's an option called color threshold. And if we bring this up, we can slowly fill in those gaps. And it might be kind of hard to see, so let's zoom in and try that again. We bring it over, you can see the gaps, and as we hold down and move to the right, we're able to fill it in using the threshold. Going to the left does the opposite effect. And so this allows us to control this as we fill in. So let's try this again using a higher threshold. And as we come in here, you're gonna see that we have a cleaner result. Let's go ahead and back up one more time. We're just going to clear this layer or undo the actions we just did. You may recall we originally wanted a barrier between the head and the body. Well, in order to achieve that, we need to go back to the original inking layer and fill in some of these lines that are a bit incomplete. So right here, right there, and then we can come down and just match that line right there. We now have a definitive border and this will allow us to separate the head and make it lighter. So if we go back now to the bottom layer under the reference, we can grab our orange, bring it in and fill in the back Next, we can come over here and fill in the tail. Because of the line work, we just have to do it separately like this, but that's okay. It works well enough. And we have the fin as well. And of course, the bottom fin. And now we have something that looks like this, allowing us to separate the head with a different color. What's cool about this is if we hide the inking layer, we can take a look at what the reference looks like. And here we have very clean fills and it's looking good. So now let's lighten the head. We can just make the orange color a little bit lighter and maybe even a little bit more yellow. Just come in and tweak it a little bit and then bring that color over to the head. And we now have two colors for the fish. And from here, we can just keep going with filling things in for the eye, let's choose a slightly off white color. That way we have room to add highlights later on and just bring it over to the eye. And so far, so good. 
For the eyebrow, we can come in and add a color for that, perhaps a darker orange or maybe even a brown. Just bring it over and put it in. And then we have the lips. We can emphasize those with a lighter color as well. First, let's reference the head color by holding down our finger and releasing on the head. That will bring us back to that original orange. And then we can come in and lighten it so we can use it as a reference and we don't have to guess which color we were using. Now for something like this, where you have broken up lines and the styles more of a not enclosed nature, <laughs> you can come in here and manually paint it in using an airbrush. And again, the airbrush works best for cases like this. It's a pretty small area, so it doesn't take long. Now looking at this, it could be maybe a little bit lighter. You want to be careful with making things too saturated. So we're just going to pick something that's slightly lighter and go back through this again using that brush, painting over the lips and making sure everything is consistent. All right, we can now focus on the bubbles since our fish has all the flat colors we need applied. So coming over here to the bubbles, we can select a light blue or even green tinted color. And then we're just going to use the fill method that we've been using before. So just coming in, you're just going to drag and drop into all these little ovals that we created for the bubbles. When doing this, you want to make sure you're getting within the opening. If you have it set slightly outside like this, you're going to apply the fill around the stroke. And you don't want that. So let's just undo that and try again. Make sure you get it in the center. And also here, this might not work. There's an opening, but it did for us. But again, it depends on your threshold. If we come in here and we play around with this, the higher the threshold, all the way to 100%, it's not going to work. It's going to fill up the whole screen. So again, just little things to keep in mind as you continue to work with your fill options in Procreate. And also you can do it manually, like we just did there. If you want to just fill it in with your brush, completely up to you. However, it is quicker overall, typically, to just come in and drag and drop. But if you have a situation where you have a really small gap, maybe just quickly coming in and brushing it over is the best option. Such as right here, just fill it in. We can worry about the line work later. And then we have just a few more bubbles down here. Again, just dragging and dropping, just trying to get them all filled in as quick and as efficiently as we can. Just a few more here. And there we go. Awesome. So now, I believe all the bubbles are filled in. Things are looking good. The flat colors have been applied to our fish. So we'll pause here and up next, keep adding colors to add more life to the character. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit toonfiles.com.